Hey you, welcome to my channel, A Year and a Day. My name is Jenny and today I wanted to chat a bit about my low buy year. Now before we start, it goes without saying that everything I will share in this video is based on my own personal point of view. If you don't enjoy this topic, or if you simply don't care, please feel free to move along and spend your time somewhere else. With that little disclaimer out of the way, let's start with why I felt the need to have a low buy year to begin with. My relationship with consumerism has always been kind of tricky. On the one hand, I really love pretty stuff, especially books and anything with illustrations. On the other hand, I don't want to harm our environment any more than we humans already do. And of course, that's the tricky bit. Because any form of consumerism is in a way harmful to our planet, right? Everything that is created requires resources. So when you look at it like that, when is it ever really okay to cut down trees or pollute our air? Especially if it's for something that you don't need for your immediate survival. And yet, pretty books and artwork bring me joy. And joy is also important in life. So in the end, I try to be mindful about what I bring into my home. But also try to allow myself some joy. But last year, retail therapy kind of got away with me. Blame it on the pandemic, anxiety or whatever, but I started buying stuff for the wrong reasons and by the end of the year it didn't feel right. So before we go on, let's take a look at what I for myself consider to be right and wrong reasons for buying stuff I don't necessarily need for my survival, aka pretty stuff like books and tarot decks. For me, right reasons are if a product is unique and will bring me a lot of joy, if a product will be of use, or if a product will teach me something. Now let's look at the wrong reasons. Wrong reasons are if I need instant gratification, or if I'm buying something because I'm bored, or because I just feel like getting myself a present. So the big difference between these two categories is that the product itself is completely irrelevant in that list of wrong reasons. That list is all about seeking a short-lived dopamine hit to get me through the day. And it has nothing to do with the thing I'm buying. So, in an attempt to break the pattern, I decided to make 2022 a low buy year for me. My ambition was to get rid of that buying urge that backwards way of thinking, where it's not about the product anymore, but about the dopamine hit. And I decided to focus on my two biggest problem areas, books and tarot. Let's get into the rules I set up for myself at the start of 2022. For the books, I kept it simple. I just had to ask myself, are you going to read or use this book immediately? Or do you just want to add to your collection? In that last case, don't buy it yet. Your collection is good enough for now. For tarot, I was a bit more strict. I first made a list of the pre-orders and kickstarters I was expecting. There were about six of them arriving in 2022. Then I set a limit for myself. I could get six tarot decks and back three kickstarters. And considering I already have a lovely collection to work with, I seriously thought that would be more than enough. Spoiler alert, I was wrong. So let's get into how I did this first quarter of 2022. At the start it wasn't even that hard to follow my own rules. It was actually kind of nice to have some guidelines and questions I could ask myself when I got that urge to buy anything. Is it really nice enough to be one of only six allowed purchases? Does it have anything to add to my collection or practice? And what other deck in my collection could scratch this itch for me? And that already actually helped me a lot in my fight against the urge. It stopped me from buying quite a bit of decks. 
So in a way, my low buy year is already a success and helped me be more aware of my own behavior and help me make better choices. At the same time, I ordered six new tarot decks in the first quarter of 2022 and backed one Kickstarter. I will for sure break the limit of six this year. For now, I do not feel bad because I did manage to break the pattern I wanted to break and overcome the urge. But I am aware that I should keep a close eye on myself in the following months to make sure I don't get sucked back into old ways. Let's get to the fun part and take a look at the books and tarot decks that came into my collection in the first quarter of 2022, just because I think it's fun to share. Let's start with books. After reading The History of Tarot Art by Holly Adams Easley and Esther Jor Archer, I couldn't resist getting more resources on the history of tarot. I just find it really fascinating. I mean, it's basically a draw it in your own style that has been going on for 600 years. I mean, how cool is that? Iconic Tarot Decks by Sarah Bartlett goes through the history, symbolism and design of over 50 tarot decks. Tarot and Divination Cards by Leticia Barbier is structured a little differently and discusses the history and design card by card. For my journaling practice, I bought two books by Andy Matzner. Both are chunky workbooks with a strong focus on self-care and personal growth, which fits my practice perfectly. Tarot for Transformation does a deep dive into the major arcana. Journaling the Tarot has journaling prompts for all 78 cards. I'm very happy I was able to get these at a reasonable price on Amazon. Because they had been on my wish list for a long time, but they were just way too expensive. And that's it for books, which I think it's pretty good. Now let's move on to Tarot. Like I mentioned earlier, I was already expecting some decks I ordered or backed in 2021. So let's start with those. First one is the Norse Oracle by Wild Stag Creations on Etsy. I ordered this on a whim because I was doing a Norse mythology deep dive for a while. Although I like the artwork, the packaging and guidebook were a bit of a letdown to be honest. The box is too big for the cards and different than pictured on Etsy. And the book is just a folded piece of paper with some keywords. Considering how rich and expansive Norse mythology is, the guidebook could have been so much more than this. But I guess it's enough to start looking for more information yourself. The cards are fine and I like this style of illustration so in the end I'm pretty happy to have it in my collection. I cannot show you the next one because I already rehomed it. It was the third part of the Seasons of the Witch series by Rockpool, the Beltane one. I already have the Sawin and the Yule editions, so pre-ordering the Beltane was kind of a no-brainer. But although I really like the idea behind the series and I really want to love these decks, 
I just don't think it's for me. Of course, I do not mean any disrespect to the creators, but for me personally, it just didn't work out. So I rehung Beltane immediately and might do the same with Salvin and Yule somewhere in the future. Next up is the Lilifer Tarot by Marion Constantine. I already showed this in a first impressions video for which I will leave a link below. Marion is the creator of the Reclaim Oracle, which is one of my favorite oracle decks. And she did a Kickstarter for this tarot deck last year. I do not think it's an easy reader. And I really need to do a deep dive before I can work with this deck. But I absolutely love the artwork and quality of this deck. And for that alone, I will keep it in my collection for sure. Last one of the decks I pre-ordered in 2021 is the Victorian Romantic 4th Edition by Bava Studios, which comes in this lovely wooden box. This was a total impulse buy last year, and also maybe a little case of FOMO, because I already have another Baba Studios deck, the Fantastic Menagerie, and although the quality is lovely, it does nothing for me. Somehow the artwork and colors feel cold and distant, and it feels more like a museum piece in my collection than a deck I feel called to actually work with. And I could have known, but I feel the exact same way about the Victorian Romantic. The quality is lovely, but compared to other art team decks in my collection, like Revival Art or Majestic Earth, this just sort of falls flat for me. I do really love the guidebook for this one though. It's super informative and it really goes into the original artwork and process of creating the deck, which I really love. So I'll keep this one in my collection for now and see if it works out. And those were all my pre-orders and kickstarters from last year that arrived in 2022. Have you noticed how my feelings about the decks I ordered in 2021 are a bit mixed? Let's see if that changes for the ones I got in 2022, after starting my low buy here. The first one I got this year was the Tempest Tarot by Tarot by Macy. At the time I ordered it, I did feel bad and a little worried about my low buy year. I literally ordered this one on the 16th of January, so just two weeks in. But I have nothing else in my collection like this, and I love the ocean and seafaring theme of this deck. So you know what, zero regrets on this one. In January I also backed my first, and up until now only, Kickstarter of the year. The I'm Here Emotional Care Deck by Murphy Pines. I kind of already passed on this one when I saw it on Kickstarter, because the artwork was a little too digital for my taste. But then I heard Lisa Papaz talk about this deck, and she actually did a complete walkthrough of it on her channel. And I just knew it would be a perfect fit for me and my practice. So I backed it without hesitation and I have zero regrets about it. All stretch goals were reached and we will be getting a whole extra set of cards on top of the deck itself. I can't wait for it to get here. Next up were two second-hand finds I got for only 10 euros each. Tarot of Oppositions and the Tarot of the Divine. These had been on my wish list for a while, and for 10 euros a piece, I decided it would be a good opportunity to try them out. I actually was only planning on getting the Tarot of Oppositions, but made a last minute decision to also get the Tarot of the Divine. And I'm so glad I did. 
I like the illustrated art style and really like the idea to incorporate reversed meanings of the cards into the artwork. But I can't help to find it a little bit shallow. Again, I'm sorry to say this and I don't mean any disrespect to the creators. But there are quite a few cards that have pretty blondes for the upright meanings and cranky brunettes in darker clothes for the reversed. And that just seems a bit too easy. I cannot unsee it. It annoys me and that's why this deck is currently waiting to be rehomed. Terror of the Divine, however, turned out to be a lovely surprise. I have no idea why I had expected so little of it. It's beautifully illustrated and it's based on folklore and fairy tales from around the world, which I love. Yet I had completely underestimated this deck when I had seen it online before. But having it in my hands and going through the cards, I'm just really happy to have it. And I decided to get Beneath the Moon as well. This is a book by the same creator, Yoshi Yoshitani, containing one-page summaries of the stories the tarot is based upon. Now you can easily use the deck without the book, but I love that it gave me more insight into the stories the deck is based on. And I think it's a really lovely addition to have. Quick tip! I also heard the Tarot of the Divine Handbook will be published later this year and it will focus specifically on the archetypes and symbolism of the deck. So keep your eyes out for that one if you're interested. On to the next one. The Kawaii Tarot by Lulu Mayo. A complete impulse buy but zero regrets. I got this for 13 euros from Amazon. 13 euros people! That is like 14 dollars or 11 pounds, which is a ridiculously low price for what you're getting in my opinion. A hardcover box, a full color guidebook and 78 of the most amazingly cute illustrated tarot cards ever. And the interpretations are really good as well, so I really feel you're getting so much more than just another kawaii novelty deck. Overall, I'm really impressed by this one and so happy to have it in my collection. I'll link the first impressions video I did on this one below if you want to see all the cards and pairings. Last but not least is the Outgrow Yourself Oracle and Tarot by Ecta Spalman. I'll link the first impressions video I did on this one below as well and also the deck mod video I did when I decided to etch this one in black. I really love this deck and have been enjoying pairing it with the Majestic Earth Tarot. I know that sounds like the most random pairing ever, but like I explained in my first impressions video, I've kind of adopted these little figures as my little garden demons. And combining them with landscapes and setting them free as a sort of path working is just the best thing ever. And that's it. Those were the decks and books I got in the first quarter of 2022. For me there is a clear difference in my overall feelings of the things I got after starting my low buy year. It feels much more intentional. For the upcoming three months I will continue to be mindful about what I bring into my collection and I'm curious to find out what choices I will make along the way. I hope you enjoyed this little ramble about my low buy year and the show and tell of all the things I ended up getting in the first quarter of 2022. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about this whole low buy year thing and if you ever consider doing one. I hope I was at least able to clearly explain why doing one was important for me personally. Okay, this is probably my longest video yet, so I'm not even sure if anyone is still watching at this point. But if you are, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!